welcome to the Synthetic Electron 3D channel. The bed mount on my Elegoo Centauri Carbon snapped. Instead of just reprinting the OEM part, I thought, why not fix the problem and add something useful? That's how this light upgrade came about. After over 400 hours of printing across my two Centauri Carbons, 165 hours on Spitfire, 268 on Zero, weak points have started to show. The OEM glass filled bed mount is one of them. You can see the cracks forming here, and once that happens, it's only a matter of time before it fails. But even when the mounts weren't giving me trouble, I had other frustrations. The stock lighting in the Centauri Carbon is terrible. Shadows everywhere. And at the bed level, it's almost impossible to see crisp detail. That makes filming content a pain for me, and it makes monitoring prints harder for everyone. I've tried a few different materials for replacements. This yellow mount is Polymaker ASA. Thanks to Polymaker for supplying the filament. With four walls, 15% gyroid infill, and a stiffer orientation, it's tougher than the OEM injection molded version. ASA isn't as stiff as some other materials, but in this position, it's perfectly suitable. The Z-axis sees very little acceleration compared to X and Y, and my slicer settings mitigate that lack of stiffness. I've also been testing HTPLA, which has been outperforming ASA on my tool head cover when it comes to resisting warping and discoloration. It is heavier than ASA, but for a bed mount, that doesn't really matter. The Z doesn't see Excel loads like other axes. Here's a test print. I haven't installed it yet. And now, this Fiberon PET CF17 version adds carbon fiber reinforcement and superior HDT. So, out comes the ASA mount. It's been reliable, but I want to give Fiberon PET CF17 a try for this application due to its high HDT and carbon fiber reinforcement. Before you start, drop a bubble level on the bed and note where it's sitting. That way, when you put things back together, you can return to the same reference point before tightening the mount screws. Here's the sequence. First, lower the bed to the bottom. When you push on it, press near the rods and lead screws so you don't stress the remaining mounts. After you've removed the top mount for the guide rod and lead screw, slide the guide rod out. Next, raise the bed back up to the top. That gives the lead screw just enough flex to rotate the mount out without bending the screw. Leave the Z-nut on the lead screw. It usually spins to the bottom on its own. That's it. The mount is free. Reassembly is the reverse. Start with a new mount loosely installed, then bring the Z-nut back up until it seats in the recess. This is where that bubble level comes in. Match it back to the same position you noted earlier, then lock the screws. After that, you're ready for the firmware bed leveling procedure. The socket is friction fit, but the bulb is retained and powered with a pair of M2 self-tapping screws. The procedure is simple. Insert the bulb into the slot, then loop the wire around the screws and tighten them down. The screw heads act as terminals, pinching the wire against the chamfer in the mount while the tips just protrude into the slot and dig into the bulb's PCB pads. That secures the bulb in place mechanically and makes the electrical connection at the same time. Just don't forget to loosen the screws when you go to remove the bulb. The screws I'm using measure about 5.88 millimeters from the tip to the top of the head. So nominally they're either 6 or 5.5 millimeter. I'll link the exact screws in the description and in a card. They do scuff up the bulb's contacts, but since these are disposable commodity bulbs, it's not a concern unless you're reinstalling the same one repeatedly. For wiring, I'm using solid copper core 28 gauge PVC insulated hookup wire. I couldn't find silicone insulated in solid core, but solid core is much easier to route neatly anyway. The pair runs between the bed and the support plate, past the control PCB, and along the existing cable bundle that already feeds the bed electronics. On the end, I've crimped a 2-pin JST-XH connector, the same type used for a standard fan. So I can test this with a buck converter on my fan adapter, or plug directly into an extra light header on the main board. I'll link the exact wire and connectors I used in a card and in the description. These two watt bulbs are rated for 12 to 24 volts, so they can run directly off the extra header on the main board. In my case, I've also tested them with a buck converter on my fan adapter. Both methods work fine. 
there is a big downside to this approach and that's because on the left side the camera can see the light and even though I've added a blinder to the model it doesn't totally resolve the issue so what we're gonna do in a future video is add another light on the right hand side that will kind of balance the brightness levels out a little bit it's still gonna be a bit of a problem but it should get a lot better and visibility should be a lot better as well that brings me to the next video in this series where we're going to step this up a notch and add machined bed mounts and brighter lights. I know I'm excited to see how it turns out. If you are too, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss it. In the very near future, we're also planning to look at toolhead cover developments since my initial release, some of the remixes, and we'll find out just how that HTPLA toolhead cover is holding up in one of my Centauri carbons. Anyway, that's it for this video, but if you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button, and thank you for watching. See you in the next one.